Hi everyone! I've been doing some behind the scenes work, so it's been a little while, but now I have a super cute fans YouTuber that I made for my content. I would like to show you one of the things that I recently made and painted, and I would also like to debunk some misconceptions about autism as an autistic person myself. So whether you enjoy watching art videos or you would like to hear a neurodivergent perspective on misconceptions and social constructs, then I welcome you to my channel and I hope you enjoy the video. A little bit of backstory on me is that I'm 22 years old and I was diagnosed with autism when I was 20. And getting the diagnosis made everything make so much sense to me. And I know that we all hate puzzle pieces for reasons that I won't mention, but it really was like the missing piece of the puzzle for me that made my whole life make sense up to that point. So before we get into the misconceptions, then I just want to tell you a little bit about what I'm painting slash making. I feel as if we have all seen those. I'm making this Minecraft flower in real life with wooden cubes. Well, I was really inspired by that and it looked to like a really fun thing to try out. So I decided that I wanted to do it, but with a twist. I want to make pastel Minecraft items with cubes in real life because I love pastel colors. I love pastel colors. They're so pretty. So let's get into it. I will be debunking the following misconceptions in this video. A one, being told that I am using autism as an excuse. Two, that I could get better at talking to people in real life. Three, you just need more practice. Four, that if I say I can't do something, then you can if you try hard enough. I've said this before and I will say it again. I cannot talk to people in real life. And when I say that, I can't, then this is what I mean. For one, it depends on the person. If it is a stranger that I don't know, then I cannot comfortably talk to them. I am only going to speak for myself, but let's say I'm a cashier at a job. Then I am never fully aware of my facial expressions, tone of voice, or body language. And I cannot, for the life of me, read social cues. So if someone is having a bad day, and I have to ring up their items, and I look mad, sound mad, and my body language is either too fast or too slow, and the person that I am attending to has no idea that I'm autistic, then how do you think that interaction is gonna go? Like, tell me. Tell me down below in the comments. Like, how do you think that interaction is gonna go? And like, this might all sound like really stupid or dumb or something, but like, it's really not. Like. I've, I've been through 22 years of like all this stuff and I now have a platform where I can talk about it all from my perspective. But I'll tell you that in three to four years, I've worked in the fast food and retail industry and that it doesn't go well at all. Nine times out of 10, then the customer will either get angry at me or tell a higher up that I was rude to them. And then since managers and bosses don't care if you have autism or not, they only care about customers' opinions. And then they believe the customers that say you were rude to them instead of believing them. Like, oh my God, it's so crazy how people who know you and like, should know your intentions because you worked for them like they know you they know your work ethic and such and then they believe customers that they've never even seen before and they believe that you are being rude to them when you weren't and then they don't believe you you're the one that gets in trouble or like what else have you and god that is so annoying I'll also add that as an autistic person, that I'm overly self-conscious about every last thing that I say and do, and when I say it and do it, and whenever I have to talk to customers at a job or be in a position dealing with people, then every last one of my actions is very analytical and somewhat robotic, and being in that position does not feel comfortable at all. All of the little things that I'm self-conscious about, the average person is literally not. 
The typical person is not at their job and thinking to themselves all day long, I hope I don't accidentally move my arm too fast. Or, I hope I don't accidentally speak too loud and then someone accuse me of yelling. Whenever I'm in public or at a job, then I have those thoughts and more constantly. Those thoughts do not go away and a large chunk of my energy goes towards those thoughts. And I can't not think about those thoughts because those things are things that have happened to me multiple times where customers got angry at me and accused me of being rude to them. Whenever I am in public or at a job, then I have those thoughts and more constantly. Those thoughts do not go away and a large chunk of my energy goes towards those thoughts. And I can't not think about those thoughts because those things are things that have happened to me multiple times where customers got angry at me and accused me of being rude to them when I didn't, when I did such things by accident without even realizing I was doing those things. Lastly, on this misconception, I will say that when I was 18, then at my third job, I remember getting in the car that night and crying about how stressed and hopeless I felt. And I said out loud something along the lines of, I just don't know how to talk to people. At the time, then the significant other was that I had was in the car with me and he was like, you just need practice. I fast forward another year to being 19 and getting medicated for my depression and anxiety for the first time and I always assumed that the reason I struggled so much to talk to people was because of my anxiety. However, after a few months of being on anxiety medication, then I was so happy and I felt like I could do so much more from not having crippling anxiety anymore. The medication worked and I never felt anxious. I always felt really calm. But a couple more months into it, then I started feeling hopeless again, wondering why I still struggled to talk to people even though I wasn't anxious at all. And it just felt like I didn't know how to talk to people. After another month of questioning why and such, then I did a lot of research and found some autistic creators and took some autism quizzes and such, which I knew at the time wouldn't be fully accurate. And I took multiple and then I talked to my therapist about the idea that I might be autistic because I had like 99% of the symptoms slash issues for being autistic and she believed me. And you know, that's great because a lot of therapists apparently don't believe their patients or they just have to go down this long freaking rabbit hole or whatever, but no. Um, the therapist I got believed me and she was actually really nice and stuff, so yeah. But she said that she could see that, that like she could imagine that or what have you, and she referred me for an evaluation. 11 to 12 months in the running, then I had my diagnosis. Fast forward even four years later from being told, you just need practice. And I still struggle heavily to communicate with different people that I don't know in public. I have not gotten any better at it. And that leads into the next thing I want to talk about, which is the whole, you just need practice. If I really just needed practice, then I could get better at a job. But I know how to work a job. I know how to use a cash register. I know how to stock items and organize items. I've even been a key holder at a job and took deposits to the bank and did the daily math for the store, like how much money we made this year vs last year on this day, and blah, blah, blah. Like I did all of that. I did all that because I'm not dumb. I'm a, I'm a smart person and I might not be the smartest person in the world and I might struggle with things, but like, I'm not dumb. Like, there are certain things that I struggle with that I will never be able to do like an average person, but that does not, like, make me dumb. Which, I'm gonna go a little bit further into that, like, later on in the video, but yeah, for real. And like, I open and close the store. I know how to do a job. I don't struggle with job tasks. In fact, I excel at most job tasks because I love to work and I love to be productive. I've always loved to work and not to toot my own horn, but at most jobs, I've outperformed other employees. I offered to work extra hours. I organized better than anyone else. I can visualize a space in my head and go to town with organizing. And I walk very fast, so any walking or lifting at a job 
I do is very fast and things get done quickly, especially if music is playing. I am great at working, like I am. It's not the jobs that I struggle with. It is the literal act of talking to people, which is sadly an everyday thing, whether you are in a job or not. I deeply struggle with social constructs. I deeply struggle to understand why so many typical people love to small talk so much. I fail to understand why me not talking to a customer while ringing up their items is seen as rude or impolite. If you are a customer, then your main reason for even going out to the store or the fast food chain in general is to purchase something for you to go use or eat in your personal life. Unless it is a regular customer that like comes every day and like they know you, like at which point you would have to have built some sort of acquaintance with them so it would make sense for you to talk a little bit when you see them, then you did not come to the store or fast food chain to talk to me. You came to purchase something that the business sells. So why is it that you and the business expects me to make small talk with you? I am a firm believer that you can be polite to someone with very minimal words and that sometimes you don't even have to speak to someone to be polite. But then again, a lot of times my facial expressions or body language comes off as rude. I also fail to understand why I can't have a small sign at a job on the counter that says that I am autistic. So then typical people will at least somewhat have an understanding that if I seem like I'm being rude, then I am not intentionally acting any certain way. And that's just the way that it comes off to you as a typical person. Like, that is so crazy to me. Like, a neurodivergent person is not going to act like a typical person. They're not. And if they do, then that mask only lasts so long before you are completely burnt out and you cannot handle anything in the world anymore and you just want to crumble on a bed. Like, I'm capable of so many things. I'm capable of so many things. But like, once like the mask just falls off because I'm so burnt out, then I cannot function like the typical person would. Like, just look up autism. Like, I don't, I don't understand. My last point for that misconception is that there are little, literal teenagers and even children who communicate to strangers better than I do. In fact, almost every person my age or even younger than me who I have met at jobs communicated better than I did. It is a literal deficit in my brain. My brain is neurologically wired differently than the average typical person's brain. If I just needed practice, then by now I would be able to talk to people and be social at jobs. And if I just needed practice, and what does that say about teenagers who get their first job and are 10 times better at communicating with people than I am? I've been practicing my whole life since I was old enough to go to school. I have always been as bad as I am at communicating with people I don't know and being social. So that is debunked. A lot of times when I tell people that I struggle to be social in person and that I can't talk to people in person, then people will tell me that I am being a self-defeatist. And that is something that I really want to get into. I don't know about you, but every human being on this planet, neuro neurodivergent or not, has strengths and weaknesses and things that they struggle with. It is very good to be aware of your strengths and weaknesses. And there are many ways to succeed and be successful. Just like content creation. Some people make four to five videos a month for one video a week. And some people do two videos a month. And other people do one video every one to two months. And they are still wildly successful. There are so many ways to do something. And for most things in life, then there is no one right way to do something. Think about it. Someone might be a master at dancing, but be horrible at singing. You don't have to be a master of both of those things to be successful. 
someone might be a computer whiz, but then not have a singular creative bone in their body. And they might say, I can't draw. Do we berate them about them saying that? There are right-brained people and left-brained people, and some people who are a mix of both. Someone who is amazing at art, but can't do math to save their lives? That does not diminish a person's worth. If I say that I can't do something for whatever reasons, and I accept that about myself, I'm not going to sleep crying about it. It's no big deal to me. Then me saying that I can't do X thing is not at all me having a self-defeatist mindset. There's only so much time in each day. So am I going to spend most of the hours in my day practicing talking to strangers in public, which makes me highly uncomfortable and feel overstimulated and stressed and could potentially cause a meltdown? Or am I going to use one of my strengths and then instead spend eight hours on that a day? I don't want to be a public speaker and speak in front of large crowds. And if it ever comes down to that or being in public and needing to speak, then I can either get someone to speak for me use a text-to-speech app, or just not worry about it at all. If a very smart left-brained mathematician said that they couldn't draw or that they weren't creative at all, then would you tell them, you're being a self-defeatist? Or would you just go on about your day and just be like, oh, okay. Another thing being, you can do anything you set your mind to. Well, you know what my mind is set on? My mind is set on becoming an amazing artist who does all kinds of art and makes all kinds of fun content and talks about autism from my perspective to try and educate others. And I can do it. And you can do anything that you set your mind to as well. But I only see practicing talking to people, which is something that is very overwhelming for me, as a time waster. A complete time waster. I have actual talent in my blood that is not related to being social with strangers. And we only get one life, so why would I allow that to go to waste? Why would I, like, take all of my creativity and just allow that to go to waste and suffer in the corporate world that doesn't really want to hire me anyway, that I have to work, like, so hard to even get a chance at? Why drain so much of my energy going towards that instead of going towards things that I can do and going towards things that I either have talent for or a knack for or like passion to do? Like, why? I just see that as so pointless. I have felt 10 times better and happier accepting myself as I am and accepting my weaknesses and choosing to put more focuses on my strengths, talents, and passions rather than my weaknesses. So the statement, you're being a self-defeatist, to me, is so far away from the actual truth. Because to me, if I was actually being a self-defeatist, then I would only be focusing on the things that I'm not good at, or the things that make me feel bad about myself, rather than all the other amazing things about myself that empower me and make me feel good. If I was a self-defeatist, then I wouldn't have a YouTube channel or social media to post my content on because I wouldn't believe in the idea that I could get somewhere and be somebody and be a professional artist or content creator. I'd be crying about all the jobs that I can't get right now rather than focusing on the things that I can do right now to one day make a career for myself that I love with all my heart. Like, I just, for real, like, be so for real right now, be so for real right now, come on be so for real right now and like I have cried about it before and within my lifetime then I probably still will because I'm not perfect and feelings are valid and it's okay to feel bad or sad sometimes but those feelings are easy to get caught up in and you have to remember that your feelings and thoughts are like clouds and any feeling or thought you have good or bad will pass by the same way that the clouds in the sky do but if I've learned anything at all then it is that self-acceptance and accepting your flaws, imperfections, strengths, and weaknesses is very empowering. And when you can come to accept that, then your whole mindset shift, which is so weird and the complete opposite of what these misconceptions I've talked about in this video get across. Knowing my weaknesses and that I have them and understanding why I have them has greatly helped me to be happier with myself and more accepting towards myself 
rather than just going on about life, masking and pretending that I don't have any weaknesses and having an empty feeling inside. To be so for real. Because, like, me accepting myself and accepting, okay, so these are the issues that I have, but what are the strengths that I have? What things can I do? What things am I great at that I could become a master at one day? Like, what am I focusing on? I'm focusing on the things that I feel like I could get really, really good at and that would be worth something one day rather than stuff that I just can't do. If you made it to the end of the video, then thank you so much for watching. And if you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you want to like the video, like the video. And I hope you have a good day and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.